Eamon Khan here for seconds out with the Omen, Spencer Oliver. Spencer, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, very well, I mean you. Yeah, not bad. All better for speaking to yourself. Interesting card, this one. A breakthrough card. It's got talent after talent after talent. You're an interesting guy to speak to because obviously you've got an eye for talent, but also you speak on the mainstream on a broadcast like Talk, talk yeah. Sport. What have these talents got to do this weekend to keep their name in your mouths going through and going through to keep up the momentum? Listen, it's all, it's, this is all about opportunity, isn't it? You know, these, the, I, I like these shows at the York Hall, by the way. There's something about this venue that, that, that is magical where it brings out the best in fighters, you know, and I think that we're going to get that tomorrow night. We're going to see some great fights that we've got on the card. You've got someone like Caroline Dubois, who's like 7 and 0, 5 KOs, boxing Rodriguez, who's very, very experienced. She's boxed for the world title before, lost that on a split decision. In her last fight, she traveled away from home and she boxed the Olympic um, 2016 silver medalist, lightweight silver medalist, and she come away with a draw. So it tells you the caliber of opponent that Rodriguez is. Respect to Caroline Dubois stepping up, taking the fight, IBO world title on the line. But she's got a tough fight in Rodriguez, as we saw at the open workout yesterday. Typical Mexican style, comes forward, lets the shops go, good quick hand speed. But that may be her undoing against someone like Dubois, who you know, he's very spiteful with her shots. So, yeah, look, it's, it's a great card through the card, actually. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Someone like Callum Simpson uh, coming from the north from Barnsley, it feels like that area could do, it's got talent coming through, yeah. but could be a real need for some rejuvenation. Someone like Callum could be that guy to rejuvenate that area. Absolutely. We, you know, we, uh, we Callum Simpson's doing a, a great thing at the moment. You know, he's come out of nowhere, hasn't he? You know, he built up a good record. He's come out of nowhere, but you recognise it. You look at it. When I first saw him, I went, He's like an orthodox sort of style, Joe Calzaghe, where he carries his hands quite low, throws cusses and punches. There's something about him. He's quite infectious when you speak to him. He's a nice, he's a nice aura around him. And he could be the guy to fly the flag. I think that he's got plenty of potential. He's got a good opponent again tomorrow night. Someone that's very durable. Someone that's going to take him the rounds, and that's what he needs. And someone for Vidal, of Vidal Riley's calibre as well too, got great boxing calibre, but also can cross over into different streams of consciousness because yeah. of what he brings in terms of the YouTube audience as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Vidal Riley's, you know, he's huge in that world, you know, working with KSI for the fight with Logan Paul, etc. And he's built up a very, very good profile around himself. But he can fight, man. You go back like he boxed for West Ham ABC and he's one of those guys that can fight. And I'm really looking forward to it. He's got a good unbeaten opponent again tomorrow. Another step up for him. Um, but I'm expecting him to do big things. I expect a KO from uh, Vidal Riley. I, I actually like him. I think that the Cruiserweight is one of the most attractive divisions out there right now. And Vidal Riley, I believe in a year or so, he'll be putting his name right up there. I think that it's all about staying active now, getting the rounds under his belt and uh, moving on. But yeah, I think he could be a prominent part of the of the Cruiserweight division. Jumping into it, it's not, never great for boxing fans because there's a clash of cards, obviously not great for everyone involved. But um, how do you feel with the card compared to what else is being offered this weekend? Well, do you know what? It's one of those, isn't it? It's about, you know, all these guys, you know, putting their, their name out there, getting that opportunity. You know, these are a lot of the young rising stars coming through. And that's what it is. That's why it's here in the York Hall. You know, you flip over to what Matram's doing over, over at Wembley with um, with uh, Thompson, uh, you know, against uh, Jaya Opataya. That's a great fight. It's a massive opportunity for Thompson. Uh, a huge opportunity for him. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good card. Look, it's healthy for boxing, man, that we're getting all these shows on. And, um, you know, this is slightly different to that show because you've got a world title fight on that show. You have here as well with Caroline Dubois in the IBO world title, but at a lower sort of level. So, yeah, look, it's healthy for boxing. I'm glad that Matchroom have got a big show on there as well tomorrow night. Let me pick your brain on a couple of other things in the boxing sphere. First of all, competition is ramping up. I don't know if you've seen the that Magnificent Seven release. Uh, that looks a good card. Do you feel like this competition is healthy and uh, look, everyone's going to raise their game too? Absolutely. It's all about raising your game. You know, with, with the boxers now, when they're getting on these TV cards and whatnot, it's about opportunity and raising their game. They, they, they The young fighters that are coming through got, treat it like they're world title fights because they know that putting a good performance and you become TV friendly, you're going to get on the card again. And that's what it's all about, man. It's, it's very difficult for young fighters starting out now when they're boxing on this small hall circuit like most of them go on here at the York Hall. And like I said to you, when I said that there's something magical about this where you see unbelievable fights, if you come here on a Friday night when they've got non-televised shows on, some of the shows are unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? They put on like spectacular because the kids are fighting trying to get on these cards, on the TV cards. So, yeah, this is all opportunity. It's all about opportunity. Rewinding back to last weekend, we saw the return of Conor Ben over in uh, 
the United States of America. What did you make of his performance? What did you make? Where do you stand on the divide and Conor Ben being in the ring or not? Well, listen, I think I've, I've been quite vocal about where I make it. Like I think that you know, jurisdiction lifted the ban and cleared him to box, but he hasn't cleared his he hasn't cleared the foul test, and I think that's what we need to see. You know, taking that out of the equation, looking at Conor's performance, he done what he had to do. He got off the ring rust. I thought he put in a good performance against a very durable opponent. But what he showed me was that Conor Ben's future lies at 147 and not 154 or 160, where they're talking about with Chris Eubank. I think if they take the Chris Eubank fight, that's all about, you know, the, the, you know, the financial gain. And I get that on the commercial side of things and how big that show would be. It would be huge. But for Conor Ben, I think his future lies at 147. But more importantly, I want to see him clear this up with UCAD and with the British Boxing Board of Control. I want to see him clear his name. Just quickly, as we're about to start uh, the way in, look, uh, a lot of fallout in Zhang versus Joyce too. I just wonder, I know you spoke about it. I wonder for Zhang, out of the top four, Wilder, Fury, Usyk, AJ, who would you pick for him to beat? Well, listen, I think that, you know, Zhang puts his name right up there now. You know, that's what one win does. You know, I think that the way, the manner that he, he beat Joe Joyce, it, it was very, very destructive. It, you know, it was a clinical finish, but he showed that he's got that adaptability. Joe Joyce come out with a game plan. He was moving around to his left, leaning over to one side, but good fighters have that adaptability. And Zhang showed that he's not just a big guy, he's got quick hands, but he's also got a boxing brain. So you give him a chance against, you know, any of the heavyweights out there, you really do. The fight that I would like to see for Zhang you know, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder seems to have just fallen through. Joshua's looking for an opponent in December. How good would that be? Them two have got history. 2012 Olympics, quarterfinals. Joshua beat Zelly Zhang 15-11. He had Zhang down, but it was a tough fight in that Olympic quarterfinal. I'd like to see him go again. I'd like to see Joshua go over to China, take on Zhang. It would be a huge fight, massive event. And, you know, Zhang, I know, would want to fight. Anthony Joshua in the team. I think Eddie Hearn said he would like to explore that. That's that's the obvious fight for both of the guys now. Zhang's stock has risen off that Joe Joyce victory. There's been a lot of talk about AJ versus Wilder, a fight that seems to be happening and never happening. Do you stand confident now that we'll ever see that fight? I'm hoping that we see it. I'm, I'm, I'm still hopeful that we see it, but obviously... These heavyweights, the big problem we've got is the heavyweights are waiting. They're all hanging out for this Saudi money. And unfortunately, for one reason or another, this has fallen through. So we're not going to see it. So um, let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful that we need that because to, you know, this is about legacies and modern eras and whatnot. So you need to see the best to fight the best, to, you know, to, to create those modern eras. And we've, there's a lot of fights that are still missing right now. Anthony, uh, Anthony Joshua versus Wilder is one of those fights. We need to see Alexander Usyk versus um, Tyson Fury. You know, there's big fights out there. We need to see Usyk versus Wilder. We need to see these fights. We want to see Joshua Fury. So, you know, hopefully, I'm hopeful. That's all I can say. But then we've been hopeful for about three years, haven't we? But let's hope, look, look, we need it. Boxing needs it. You need, you need to see the best fighting the best. These guys are not getting any younger now. They're becoming, they're getting into the twilight of their careers. We've only probably got a couple of years left for these fights to happen. So I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that 2024 brings these fights. Just a quick one whilst these three are here. Out of you three, pound for pound, which one of you was the best? Oh, wow. That's a big shout. You've got to go, like, you've got to go like, the longest reigning ever cruiserweight champion in Johnny Nelson. Right? And look at him, man. He's back down to cruiserweight again. He's eating his nuts. He's doing, you know what I mean? He's living the life, this guy. You know, there's a lot of like this YouTube celebrity boxers coming back sort of thing. I reckon Johnny Nelson's had an offer because he's dropped back down to cruiserweight. That's where I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Who is that offer? Who knows? But yeah, no, listen, Johnny Nelson was like, you know, he's a boxing legend. You know, longest reigning cruiserweight champion ever. You can't take that away from him. Matt Macklin, you know, he's a legend in his own right. You know, he, we, he um, former European champion as well, boxer of a world title, very unlucky as well against Felix Sturm. Should have got that fight. Um, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, great fighter as well. Anniversary of him and more. Say it again. It's the anniversary of him and Jim. Who's ever going to fight that? Whoever's going to forget that fight? You know, that was an absolutely epic battle. We'll go down in history as one of the greatest British fights of all time. Thanks for leaving there. Thanks for sticking up. Appreciate it.